Uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, it's uh, thrilling to be uh, back in front of the uh, field day parole board again. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm here with my, uh, my colleague, uh, Mac Musa, from our technical marketing team. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Chuck Lukaszewski from the CTO team. Uh, I'm responsible for the wireless portfolio within the CTO organization. Uh, and I'm actually standing in, a lot of you know me as a radio head. Um, uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is actually a province of a gentleman called Dan Harkins, um, who can't be with us today because uh, this is IEEE week, so they're just wrapping up out, um, uh, out in Hawaii now. But uh, what we want to do is talk about the security enhancements, the new security standards that are coming, uh, which are really um, critical for a whole bunch of reasons in uh, a lot of the customer segments that uh, we, both, uh, we most care about. But also, um, and uh, I think even more importantly, and we have a demo for you, uh, of great interest to just the average consumer Right, just average person who's out there trying to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot in a hotel or, or whatever, um, and they're going to get a lot better security uh, without it even uh, realizing it. So um, Wi-Fi security needs an upgrade. I think as practitioners, you probably know that better than uh, almost anybody. Um, it's you know, from uh, uh, just an age perspective, WPA2 is almost 14 years old, so it's been around a really long time. It served us really well, but there are some known issues, particularly in WPA2 Personal, uh, which I'll get into, uh, that we're kind of known from the beginning, but every once in a while there's a, you know, somebody will write a paper that, you know, um, oh my God, it doesn't have forward secrecy, right? Well, that was, that was, that was sort of known at the time, but it was deemed an acceptable trade-off in terms of complexity relative to what the silicon was capable at that time. And then, of course, in the enterprise space, uh, as, as you know from painful firsthand experience, there are a lot of different ways that you can configure, right? There's a lot of levers that have to be set in exactly the correct pre-flight configuration for you to take off. And if you get it wrong, uh, you could inadvertently create a chain with a weak link in the middle and you end up with a lot less security than, than you actually think you have. Um, and if you think about the use cases today, right, so cap the portals, right, I, I log in, maybe I've got an HTTPS session, if I'm lucky, to the cap the portal, and then any security state I have is promptly thrown away, right, as soon as I'm in, and now I'm fully exposed, right, for any browsing that I'm doing. Um, you know, the coffee shop with the, or the restaurant with the, the PSK up on the wall, right? Again, as you know, that, that is no more secure than an open network, right? It, for somebody with tools and knowledge, it's uh, barely more work to get that, uh, to get that recovered. Um, and then IoT is starting to pose challenges, right? So if you say, okay, the solution to that is more complex passwords, right? Let's all, ha let's all make longer passwords with more stars and, and uh, more characters, right? That's not scalable for IoT devices. Uh, and headless devices that need uh, management. So WPA3 is going to really close these gaps and um, uh, uh, along with enhanced open. So there are two certifications. Um, this is an update for the, uh, those of you that aren't following. There are, uh, originally it was just going to be WPA3. At the last minute, um, op the new open mode was broken out on its own. Um, there was some concern that it just would be confusing to have since people think of open as not in the secured context. Um, so there are two certifications. Uh, they will be uh, mandatory. Um, and the, OW, the enhanced open is based on technology called OWE. And I'm going to walk you through each of these. Uh, basically, it, you get confidentiality. You get encryption on all open traffic without having to do anything. Right? It's just automatic. Um, WP3 personal will be based on a technology called simultaneous authentication of equals. Um, and that solves the forward secrecy problem. And then um, WPA3 Enterprise, we're not, we don't need to sort of change the engine. Uh, we're just cleaning the engine up in a lot of ways. So we're getting, the, the, the main innovation, if you will, is to um, throw out um, a bunch of those levers and basically reduce it to three choices that are pre-selected that you can't get into any trouble. And uh, by the way, we're upgrading to 256-bit encryption uh, and uh, 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 quantum resistance, at least as it's understood today. And then there are some enhancements on the certification side. So checking of cert chains is going to be done uh, as a mandatory part of the process. And MFPs are now going to be mandatory going forward in all these modes. So uh, enhanced open, basically the, the, the punchline is you know, no more clear text, right? Uh, it's based on RFC 8110, and Dan Harkins is the co-author of that um, RFC. Uh, Dan's been working on key exchanges forever. He was the co-author of the original Ike V1 uh, RFC, so uh, he's done a lot of work in this area. 
and uh, the, the key innovation is um, if I want confidentiality, but I don't necessarily care about authentication, right, which is the hotel coffee shop case, um, it really doesn't matter what key I use. I just need a key, right? So the key innovation here is that, that each side, the station and the, client, uh, the, the AP, um, choose an ephemeral public-private key pair, and they exchange that, right? And they use that to prove uh, 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 that uh, they can conform to the protocol, and, uh, and then they use that to derive a, the, uh, a unique PMK. And it's truly a unique PMK. So it's not like the coffee shop. So it's better even than uh, you know, the current WPA2 personal, right? Which, in which everybody is using a common PMK. So it's unauthenticated. Isn't that insecure? As I've just said, it's way better than what we have now. Um, because at least you're not, you're, nothing you do is in the clear. Uh, it's completely transparent, as we'll demo for you in a minute. Um, to users, well, actually, I guess the demo is less than transparent, but uh, in, <laughs> it, the idea is that it, an administrator will provision open network just as they do now. A user will connect to an open network just as they do now. They'll, there'll be something without a lock attached to it, but in reality, it's got, it's got encryption uh, under the hood. I just wonder if you had any, any feedback or information about in some countries where they have, we have to know who's on the other end. Yep. Will this help in that scenario won't make any difference um again and typically in that case like the so the captive portal is not going away but we're making the on-air experience more secure right so basically that would be happening in an owe protected tunnel thanks all right um the, it's backward compatible which is what we're going to describe not meaning that legacy stations are going to get encryption obviously that's not possible but you can set up an ssi uh, when you when you provision this there's a transition mode which we'll show you um, that allow that can serve both a non owe station and an owe station uh, at the same time um, and it supports pmk caching so i just have to ask and i don't probably jump on the gun on this one sure. but when they came out and they stripped the owe requirement out of the wpa2 certification and made it optional. And I guess not stripping it out, but they made it optional, right? Out of WPA3. It, yes, out of WPA3. Is that, it, is Aruba going forward with OWE? We are, absolutely, we are. And we're, uh, we are a co-leader on this and we're working, uh, you know, there's a whole backstory to that. Um, and I think it's, uh, it, depending on the mode, there's, there's an optional mode and a mandatory mode, but in any case, um, that story is not over yet. Uh, in the meantime, we're shipping, uh, this will be in our products in uh, uh, 8.4 in either late late October, so late next month or early next. We're actively working with um, the client vendors to get this uh, out as well. So um, th we we think, I mean, we've always been a security company first and a wireless company second. I'm, I'm fond of saying, right, in order to do role-based access control, you yeah. kind of had to do the security part first, right? Um, so for us, this is just table stakes, and um, we intend to be very loud on this in 2019 and really help move the market. Can I hold you to that? Hmm? Can I hold you to that? <laughs> well, obviously, as far as, I, can't, as far, I, I, can't, I can't force other I, vendors to do what they... Right, but what I'm right, saying, though... But we're working very hard behind the scenes. Right. I mean, this is the one thing that I, I know a couple of us at the table, you know, when they made it an optional and not yeah. a requirement, you know, just a lot of heartache and anguish going, this is one of the things yeah. that we've been clamoring for. You're warming when, my heart. And um, so... Again, I, the story is, the <laughs> story is not over. Uh, right. From that perspective, um, but uh, you know, ultimately, um, it doesn't take a lot of companies to actually make this happen, right? This is not all 800 Wi-Fi Alliance members. <laughs> this is a handful of infrastructure vendors and a handful of client vendors, and we are very much working hard on this. Chuck, thank you. Yeah. Well, just uh, yeah. made sure I heard you said available Q4 software this year. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. And supported in. Oh, how, how far back oh, good, in the Oh, good question. So, so, uh, uh, so the 8.4 will be the 300 platform. Uh, we, it, it is also coming to the 200, but uh, that might be in a next release. All right, so it'll be basically the Wave 2 products Q4 this year. Wave 2 products for? Okay. Yeah. Well, no, no, the Wave 1 products will get it. Oh, okay. Right. It's just not, Later in, the first, not in the first release. I have okay. a question so, real quick, too. Sorry. I yep. know you want to keep moving. But um, so I'm... I'm very new to knowing about OWE and um, WPA3 as well. Yep. I haven't just had enough time to really get into it. But so, is this going to be something like a checkbox you check when you're creating your security team yeah, profile? Yeah. So, Han, let me or? let me run through it. And, and uh, actually, I skipped. Uh, yeah. So, so I think you kind of understand how it's how it works. It's basically just piggybacking the Diffie Hellman on the authentication uh, or the association request. So it's no more it's no more frames. 
And then, uh, strangely, for an open network, you're going to see a four-way <laughs> four exchange. Right? <laughs> right. Um, so we're going to have more four-way handshakes, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, every so in transition mode, right? So you can run OWE only, but we don't anticipate for a while. In transition mode, you're going to just provision uh, open open network just like you do now. It'll be WPA3 open is the op mode, okay. right? And then under the covers, the, what what will actually happen is that the, the the AP will fire up two BSS IDs, right? Um, so there's one that is uh, a normal network, it's not hidden, um, but it'll have a new IE that will link back to BSS2, which is the OWE uh, BSS. That'll be hidden. It'll be a wildcard, so it'll be blank. It'll be a blank name. Uh, it'll have an RSN in it, right? And it'll have this another version of this element that points back, so they can be correlated with one another. Because you could imagine, that in a in an overlapping environment, you could have multiple BSSs. Right from different, like you go walk into an airport or whatever, so they have to be able to, to distinguish between one another. And then the client, it looks normal. And with that, let's jump to the demo. Real quick, so again, I'm sorry. Does it does it actually <laughs> generate? Does it generate a per client hidden? No. Okay. No, it's a it's a standard. So basically, it works like a PSK BSS. Okay. Right. right. That's the uh, and and specifically a WPA3 PSK BSS. So with with true pairwise keys. Okay. Right. And and the creation of the second society will show up in uh, channel scanners or whatever. yeah you'll be able, and it's, it's on right now so if you want to for those of you who are have your PCAPs ready there's an AP beaconing um, so this is a live demo what channel uh, we're going to do what channel yeah. um, and we're on one so it is uh, yeah uh, MFD uh, dash OWE is the open SSID uh, WPA3 open SSID um, channel. Hold the on. channel uh, is, is uh, 116. 116 e. Checking now. Yeah, 116 e. 80 yeah. megahertz. Yep, 80. Yeah. And then to come back to the question that you asked, notice that it doesn't have a lock. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it looks like an it looks like an open network. A traditional open network. Yeah. yeah. Now we're running on Ubuntu. This is not. Uh, this is a pre-release client, so this is not the normal experience. So what Mac is going to do next is we're going to we're going to actually run a a, a, a uh, manual supplicant, but this is the configuration for the supplicant that he's about to run. So it's going to ask to associate to MFD OWE, right? Um, but it's got some CCMP parameters associated with it. So we'll run the script. And, so and you'll see that the legacy clients will just grab the straight up standard open. Correct. If you have a client that's they'll ignore OWE capable, it will then do this little bit. Correct. And it'll notice, it'll see the linkages well, between the two. And there's a new AKM that's been provisioned for this. And so that's how it knows that it's, it's OWE as opposed to SAE. So it sees this actually before it sends its it association right request. So Correct. it will tag, it will put that Diffie-Hillman. Are you looking at it? In the association. Using right. Yeah. Correct. Right at the beginning. Yeah. So let's go ahead and run the, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, was, I was doing, I was actually doing an. Air tool capture. So I'm running the capture right now, and then I'll fire up the, the script here to, to run the supplicant there. Okay, so so this will take just a minute. It's going to kill the normal network manager, which isn't OWE capable, fire up the supplicant. The whole, what you're saying is hopefully when you work with the client vendors, they'll have yeah. this, this little this code will be, will be just this totally screen. built in. Exactly. It all happened behind the scenes. Right. Surely. <laughs> all the IoT garbage that gets half developed. Really we sure that? hope so. <laughs> um, and we're trying to lead the way by shipping early. Right. I mean, if if you don't have an AP to talk to, it makes it harder to make that decision as a client vendor. Yeah. So that's what we can do. So uh, again, just we're we're. I'm really going to throw the schedule off here. So we we. Should, I'm going to be faster than I would like. But so here's what we connected to. Now you notice this is not the ECID we requested, right? And for those of you that are capturing, you can see that yeah. this is out there. So this is the format of it. So TM is transition mode, and then this is a randomized number to again, see, you know, keep it distinct from other OWE networks that may be operating in the same, sure. uh, in the same uh, environment. And uh, let's go to the packet capture and remember that name. Uh, so he's... If you had a standard uh, WPA3 PSK yep. supplicant yep. that can play with this? Uh, so it depends on how it gets implemented. So in theory, one could implement WPA3 without doing OWE. We hope that that's not the case. Okay, so you can see the open network, you can see the wildcard, 
SSID, so that's, that's the OWE network with the uh, RSN in it. And then let's just go straight to the client. So we should... Uh, is oh, that yeah. what the okay, standard is? is. Yeah, the so, standard? Yeah, this is, all, this is all RFC compliant. The SSID is wildcard. That is part yes, of the... Yes, that's, 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 part, of the, that's okay. part of the standard. Okay. Um, and then you, here's the RSN with the AKM in it. And then if we jump to looking at the station, so he's going to probe. Uh, he actually probes by looking at those IEs. He knows what to ask for, right? And then he constructs um, the an, an association request. Mm -hmm. Four. Right. There you go. Huh. And That's ridiculous. Uh, so there's a new IE for there's the, the RSN. Diffie-Hillman? The, correct. Yeah, right. It, so that's what's being piggybacked, right? So the only it, thing that's being carried extra on that association request is one extra IE that has correct. that random. Uh, in the outbound direction and then in the return, there's an RSN element that wasn't, wouldn't have been there. And you, and you can previously. do a full diffie element with two frames, one out, one back? Yes, that's one of the beauties of this, of this design. Yeah. 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 Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then you have the four key exchange that you see yeah. there. Right? Yeah. yeah, that one's yeah. standard, but I was just, you see that? I mean, Diffie Hillman 2, that's unique. Yeah, so uh, again, I wish uh, Dan would love to be here, so we can, but happy to follow up if you'd like to deep dive. It's two different beacons, right? So me, it's two different beacons. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. two different beacons. So, so we are taking extra air time, air time. and that Correct. starts, Ooh. so that starts playing into that, you know, mm -hmm. we, we have a general rule, right, that we should stand here for. Uh, SSIDs per per access mm -hmm. point, right? Correct. So that really does kind of start to play in. I don't know. I'll it's take this at any day. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I agree, the security is important, but it is something that people need to know that right. it, it does factor but, in. But you can easily compensate for that. I mean, I assume most of your you're you're running elevated rates. Oh yeah. Everywhere yeah. anyway. So it's in reality, it's a minimal hit. Okay. Remember, this is in transition mode, right? Once all the clients are WPA3 capable, we will yeah. run in. In 2025. True so WPA3 compliance is mandatory in two years from the certification launch, right? And we hope to tie OWE into that. So again, as I say, the story is not written, but um, WPA2 will be phased out. Is there right? anything we and can also do to TK, help with that way, story? Is, the, mm -hmm. yeah. is there anything we can do to help with that story? <laughs> We're, we will gladly volunteer whatever yeah, we can asking do. questions in, get some client vendors in meetings for field day. Um, Okay, so uh, uh, I, I mentioned that the, uh, uh, so SAE, right? So basically it's the same notion as you've just seen for WPA3 personal, it's the same type of a key exchange, except now we have a shared uh, secret between this, the two devices. The key innovation here is that unlike uh, WPA2 personal, the, key, the, the shared password, it becomes part of the PMK, right? And that's one of the reasons it's recoverable. So here, the shared password is used as an index into an elliptic curve space, right? Um, and by simply sharing a parameter and the shared key, both sides of the connection are able to uh, basically uh, come to the same key, if you will. And then that is used to construct the PMK. So it's truly pairwise. It's much, much stronger. So the strength of the link is, of the encryption now is not limited to the passphrase. The passphrase could be foo, right? Or Aruba, right? Or one, two, three. Uh, so you get strong security with a weak password, and it's it's really uh, quite a quite a uh, fascinating development. You see the RFC there. Um, from a WPA3 enterprise perspective, again, just for the security folks in the room. So these are the three uh, cipher suites that are that that are allowed basically in WPA3 uh, out of the gate. So everything else is going to be effectively deprecated. This will be it, and all the choices have been sort of pre-plumbed for you. These are incidentally the ones that are compliant with NIST and uh, NSA recommendations in terms of quantum resistance uh, as well to the extent that uh, we can do that today. Um, ClearPass has been upgraded to be able to terminate uh, that EAP traffic. So just in summary, right, so 100% encryption by default for the average user on an open network, right? Pre-shared keys get a big, a huge boost in the quality of the encryption and a new lease on life and, and actually a lot simpler to deploy, easier for IoT. We've made the enterprise environment simpler to deploy, right, and less uh, reduce the downside. And we got PMF while we were at it. So, perfect. Any last questions? So just where is the resistance coming from? Because this seems like it's, it's a no-brainer. It really is. It's your 
Same such a minimal always. hit. <laughs> it's so the where is, it always does. <laughs> it's the people that don't want to spend money to do things differently. No, no, no. I mean, there are people with, uh, you know, the standards process, there are a lot of people with good ideas, right? And uh, there's a down select thing that happens. Um, and, uh, you know, this has been in the works for a long time. This didn't just start like two years ago. Dan has been working on this in IEEE originally and then in the Alliance uh, for, I mean, seven years, I think, in the case of one of these things. So um, there's been a big build up towards this. And um, again, I wouldn't get overly focused on it. Um, we're taking a leadership position by making this available. It will be easy to develop OWE clients and WPA3 clients. Um, and, uh, and we're working behind the scenes, as I've said several times now, to try to bring the rest of the market with us. Oh, I echo Keith. If there's anything anybody at this table can do to help, let us know. So get your customers to write RFPs to the extent that they. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually like, a, I, I that's a strong possibility. Right yeah, yeah. Because once we can explain the value of this, that's yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.